far as, as far as the size and the structure, organizations with a higher percentage of workforce on the safety committees have a lower injury and illness rate. So the more people you can get involved in a safety committee, hey, the better the chance is of being successful. Well, the problem is, is that how, ca how big can you get your safety committee to be before it's too big and won't work? You know, there's kind of an optimal number. Depending on the size of your, your organization, but having individuals that represent each department and employee to employer or to management, having that 50-50 mix, sometimes that can get pretty large. Well, you don't want to keep adding people to this because how many times are you successful when you got 50 people in the room and you're trying to come to a decision? This isn't going to necessarily work. So you want to keep that as a workable size, so you're going to keep that central committee, but maybe take into consideration that each department has their own safety committee. Now you've got subcommittees that can help the central committee. In a lot of cases, those subcommittees can now handle some of those direct issues that they need to handle within their department, but they report back to the central committee. And one of the uh, WorkSafe champions this time mentioned the fact that, you know, he said, we used to have these meetings, the central committee, but when we brought it down, when I came back to work, I had nobody to give it to. So now I come back and he says, I got a department safety committee, so I bring up stuff that we talk about at the central committee is the things that I bring up at the subcommittee. So that there is a challenge in this process of making sure there's not, you know, over effort, but it is a chance for you to spread the wealth out so that not one committee is trying to do everything, but you got different subcommittees kind of handling some different topics as well. Committees should be comprised of both management and employees. And I think I've used this um, example with you guys before, but a small uh, school district that I've dealt with in the past, a couple years after we passed the Montana Safety Culture Act, and one of the discussions we had was, hey, you know, did they have a safety committee? And so we asked them, I, do you have a safety? Oh yeah, we got a safety committee. Because it's for the employees, we turned it completely over to the employees. Great, how's that working? Oh man, they're meeting every three or four months, they're doing good, they're on top of things, they're accomplishing a lot. Okay, cool. He says, by the way, here's a list of names. While you're out doing your you know, inspections and stuff, feel free to, to talk to anybody that's on this list. So I was out doing it and I ran across this guy, one of the engineers introduced himself. I said, hey, I, know, I recognize that name, it's on the list. What list? The safety committee list, you're on the safety committee list? And he says, safety committee, safety, oh yeah, 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 on the safety committee. How's that working? Haven't met in two years. Why not? Got tired of having meetings to have meetings because what happened? Again, we talked about it. Who drives the boat? Management. Who's the fuel? The employees provide the energy and stuff to accomplish things. So they had all the energy. They had all the, they wanted to go places, but nobody to take the ball and carry it to go further. Okay? So without management involvement, there you have it. But on the other side of the coin, if all you have is management, what are you doing with the employees again? Aren't you just trying to shove things down their throat again and trying to get them to, to think about it, okay? So anyway, there you have it, all right? How about your leadership on your committee? You have a committee chairman. What's their responsibility? What's their responsibility to the committee? Are they the ones that are supposed to do all the talking? They're just to facilitate. So one of the things you want them to do is to, to kind of pay attention Who's, produ who, who's talking and who isn't talking? Who, who's adding conversation? So if, if you notice that, you know, hey, you're sitting there, you haven't said anything all, all meeting. I know you have input on this. What do you got to say? They just haven't apparently felt comfortable at this point saying anything, but when you ask them to say it, they'll say it. They'll tell you everything you wanna know. They're just waiting for someone to say, please tell me what you have to say. Also part of this is to be an effective Committee, you need to make sure that you have agendas. Plan out what you want to talk about in advance. You know, th have a thought process. I know before we do, we meeting minutes that we go through and we talk about. We track old business and new business. But for those people that, you know, when we're starting up, anybody got any new topics they want to talk about? That's what the email that goes out to the committee members. Get the responses that goes on the agenda so that we talk about that with new business. Having those meeting minutes help us also keep on track. One of the things I loved about working in the Bureau was the fact that we had good conversations, but the problem is 
Nobody ever took down the minutes. So we would meet every quarter, and we met every quarter for 13 years, and we had great discussions, lots of ideas. Where'd they go? A lot of them went by the wayside because we didn't write them down. We didn't, you know, we came back every quarter and talked about them, but they never went anywhere because we didn't track exactly what we were talking about. Okay. The other thing that you want to do with your committee, anytime you form a committee or that you want to go forth with, and you're forming some kind of a committee to take on a topic, you should have a written charter. Or, and to put it in military terms, a mission statement, right? Where are you going to go? What do you want to accomplish with this group? Where, you know, give some boundaries. Otherwise, if you're not careful, you're going to be taking on this huge piece of things that you don't have any control over. So maybe by bringing that into a, a, a more workable base as far as what kind of topics are we going to cover, where is our effectiveness going to be? What are we going to talk about? Having that written charter, which is approved by top management, and those kind of things. Okay? How about having a flow chart of responsibilities? What are the responsibilities of, of the membership on your committee? Take information back, gather up information. What do you expect from those folks that are on the committee just to come in and, and just be on the committee? But you want to have some responsibilities with this as well. That they, they have some ownership to this, but they have responsibilities to reach out to other people within their organization get ideas, get problems, get those hazards, get people to talk to them so they can bring those issues to the meeting with them, okay? And of course, the last one up there is, how do you communicate with the rest of the, the organization about what you're accomplishing? Documenting that, that's the meeting minutes that you, know, you can track and see where the, what, what the, the committee has accomplished over the last year, but how are you telling everyone else? Because that's where that disconnect comes in sometimes. Somebody will put in a complaint that, you know, this is a particular hazard and nothing ever comes out of it. Well, then what are they thinking? Well, I keep bringing up this hazard. Nobody does anything about it. Apparently, they're not addressing it. Well, maybe you have addressed it or maybe you're trying to address it and you haven't got to the final fix yet. But if you don't notify people, if you don't communicate with them, however you do that. And so at Montana State Fund, one of the things that we do is we post our meeting minutes so that we have what we call the portal, and this is where all the information for us goes into this bank, and you, know, you can pull up safety minutes, you can see all these. We have a building utilization committee. We have all of these different meetings and things like that that people have that the, they can go out there and get information on these different topics.